everyone. Welcome to Explore, Discover, Create. My name is Chris. For those of you that are new here, we are a travel and adventure photography channel as well as do camera gear review tech tips and tricks. If this sounds like something you are interested in, please consider subscribing down below. Now, let's go to Kenya. <laughs> Before I get into the actual safari itself, I want to go over the camera gear that I was using. So I have my go-to, my Canon 6D Mark II, which is a wonderful camera, full frame. I did not use the 24 to 105. I used this bad dude right here, the 7200 2.8 L series lens. Probably my all-time favorite lens. It's a wonderful lens. If you ever get a chance to go to on a safari, I highly recommend a lens like this maybe a little bit longer to like a 100 to 400, but this was a great lens for what I was doing and I'm so glad that I had it to go on the safari. All right, so now we're coming up on the reservation. We're about a half an hour out and you are immediately starting to see animals. Before we even got into the park, I was about to jump out of my skin. I kept asking the driver to stop to get photos of the giraffes, the zebras, the buffalo, the gazelles. They were all right there before you even get into the park. And the driver was like, dude, you gotta chill out. <laughs> we are going to one of the biggest and most beautiful uh, reservations in the world. So this is nothing. He was just telling me, don't worry about it. I got you covered. Um, and you just start seeing everything right away. It was really cool. So after that, we had about a half an hour on the world's bumpiest road. Um, so I apologize if some of the footage is wobbly. So once you get into the park or get near the park, you're at the top of this hill and you're looking down and all you see is just the pure vastness of how huge this place is. And you see elephants, giraffes. Um, I didn't see any rhinos at this time yet. Get to that in a minute. But you see all these animals and they're all just right there and it's just, as far as the eye can see is animals and land. And it was gorgeous to be able to see God's creation right there. And I was about to jump out of my skin. We still had about 10 minutes to get down this hill. And I could not wait to get down there to get these photos. So we drive through the gates of the park to get through. And we, we are now in the park at this time. And immediately to our right are these giant buffalo, gazelles, there's giraffes, you can see elephants in the distance, you can hear them, and it was just incredible, amazing to see. And I'm asking the driver to stop about every two minutes, and he basically told me, dude, just relax, chill, take it all in, we're gonna get you see some cool stuff. Um, he's like, we are just in the beginning part of space, we're not even in the outer space yet. So immediately, as soon as you get there, you'll start seeing animals, but if I was to give you one tip or one word of advice, is just chill, relax, take it all in, and enjoy it okay these tour guides know where they're going they do this for a living they know where the animals like to burrow or hide or relax and chill in the sun or in the shade they know where they're going let them do their job he told me multiple times very politely just kind of chill out for a little bit and then we will get you to where you need to go or what you want to see and he wasn't wrong about that at all as soon as we got into the park again we saw those animals but we wanted to see more right obviously as we're driving, um, I asked him to stop for, I think I want to say a buffalo, and he's like, hold on, I got something for you. And he could see, he knows what he's looking for. So he saw way, 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 way in the distance, this little small orange spot on the horizon. So we immediately hightailed it to that area. And once we got there, we knew exactly what it was. And it was three lionesses relaxing in the sun right there on the side of the road. I'm talking 15 feet away from us. I was able to crack off a some amazing photos. A friend of mine got some great photos as well, but they were right there relaxing. They, they weren't bothered by us at all. They just kind of sat there relaxing in the, in the sun, soaking it all in. So before I go on, I want to explain the vehicle a little bit. So we are on this extended land cruiser and the top of it comes up. So you are able to stand up and get a full 360 view, wonderful landscape. and. It was really cool. So you can sit down, relax while we're transiting, or you can stand up and have the wind blowing in your face and just enjoy all of it. I think I stood up for probably seven hours straight. I did not sit down once unless uh, the driver was like telling me to sit down because I guess we're going over some rough terrain. But other than that, I just stood up. It was wonderful. It was great, amazing experience. <laughs> So 
So these reservations or these parks, they have something called the Big Five. It's if you see a lion, an elephant, a rhino, a leopard, and a buffalo. And I swear we saw four of those within 20 minutes. And I know friends that have gone to Tanzania or Tanzania. Uh, I was corrected on how to pronounce that many times. But if you ever been to Tanzania, he said that he saw maybe two giraffes in the six hour tour that he had. We saw giraffes within, before we even got into the park. Um, but we saw giraffes everywhere. They said they maybe saw two zebras the entire time they were on their tour. Zebras were everywhere on our tour. So my recommendation is, I haven't been to any other safaris except for at Disney World. But if you ever get a chance to do a safari, the Masi Mata in uh, Kenya was amazing. So our tour guide was spot on with everything. Like I said, these guys know what they're doing. They do this every day of their lives. They know where these animals are. They know what they eat. They know what they drink. They know where they're gonna be. So I guess these, all these animals are pretty much creatures of habit. So we, he told me, I was like, I wanna see Scar. I wanna see Mufasa. I wanna see the baddest dude on the planet. I wanna see the king of the jungle, right? So he's like, hold on, we'll get there. And so after we stopped a few times to take pictures of other animals, we finally, we saw a big black spot on the horizon. And we knew right away that it was a rhino, which was the last thing we needed to see for the big five. We were probably two or three hours into the tour at this time. Um, and he's like, hold on, I got something better for you right now. So I, did, I was like, what could be better than getting that one last bit of the big five, which was incredibly rare, they said. Um, so the rhino was up on the hill, he said, he's not going anywhere, I got something else for you. So we drive about a kilometer down the road, and again, big bright orange spot, two giant male lions chilling underneath this tree in the shade, laying down, sleeping. I didn't get any video of them when they popped up, and I'll explain why they did in just a second. Um, but they were just laying there and our driver kind of drove around them, obviously very slow, didn't want to uh, wake them up or upset them in any way because these are giant cats that will harm you or kill you. So anyways, he stopped. I asked him to stop so I could get a photo of them laying down and I was like, man, I really wish these things would wake up so I could get one of them to pop up. Now this was completely on accident. This was not on purpose to get them to wake up. This was not anything we did on purpose to try to get a better photo or video of them. What happened was my buddy went to go grab a bottle of water and he ended up crinkling the water on accident. And when he did that, both lions shot up. They both lifted their heads up and then immediately I started just, just started firing off photos. I didn't get any video of it because I was just more concentrated on the photos. I will throw those photos in now um, and I hope you guys enjoy. So at this point, we need two more things for the big five. We need a leopard and we need a rhino. We know where a rhino is. I can still see it from where I am with the lions. The, so we immediately head over to the rhino. Obviously this is a very big, dangerous animal and we don't want to disrupt it. So we stayed pretty far away. I was able to get a couple shots off of my 7200. Um, I was pretty far away still. So I had to zoom in and crop a little bit, but I believe I got a decent photo of him. So after we sat there for a while, we watched the rhino kind of just graze and mose around a little bit. It was very cool. Um, I guess that seeing a rhino is very, very rare for the big five. So that's what makes it. So seeing the big five is kind of a big deal because the rhino is so rare. I guess this was a black rhino, um, which is endangered. And also there's white rhinos there, which are highly endangered, um, which is very sad. But we didn't get a chance to see the white rhino. We saw the black rhino. And after we left the black rhino, we had one animal left that we needed to see, and that was a leopard. So at this point, it's getting pretty late in the day. We weren't sure if we were going to see a leopard or not. We were all pretty bummed that we were not going to be able to see the big five to go home to our friends and brag or go back to the lodge and brag that we saw the big five. But again, this driver was incredible. This tour guide was incredible. 
he made a couple phone calls and I said, yeah, there's a leopard over here, come over here. So we drove probably 15, 20 minutes and then we see a bunch of vehicles. And this was one of two spots that had a bunch of vehicles there. Other than that, we were by ourselves the entire time. We probably saw two or three throughout the day. Uh, but at, when we drove up to this spot, it was about 10 or 15 vehicles. Um, and we pull up and there are people who were whispering, there's a leopard over there, there's a leopard over there. So we pull up, I don't see the leopard and this made so much sense to me as to how leopards are camouflaged. And I know people are probably saying, how did you not know they were camouflaged? To me, black, orange, and yellow spots just did not make sense when it's green grass. So once it was crawling through the straw grass, I could barely see them. And you can see in these photos that it was really hard to make out or get a good photo um, of the leopard because he was blending in so well with that surrounding area, with that environment, with that vegetation. So to see the leopard there was really cool and see how that camouflage worked was cool. With the leopard, when we first pulled up, he was back in the vegetation in the bush. And in the bush, you can see a dead gazelle where he ended up grabbing a gazelle, killing it, and was sitting there eating it. When it was done eating, the leopard ended up walking right in between us and another vehicle. And I'm talking, I could have stuck my hand out and touched it and petted it. Don't do that, don't recommend it. Um, I did not do that, I could have. It was right there. It was insane. Um, it was just incredible to see this predator right there. And all I had to do was jump in the vehicle and we'd probably be in a lot of danger. Um, but it was incredible to see. I didn't really get great photos of the leopard because it was blending in, but I think I got one or two, which I'll throw in right now. So at this point, I was FaceTiming with my daughter who was obsessed with cheetahs. And I asked the driver, sir, can you show me a cheetah? I want to see a cheetah. My daughter loves cheetahs. He made another phone call, found cheetahs for us. We, again, we were pretty far away. It was three or four and a couple babies, I believe. Um, but it was really cool to see cheetahs. And I zoomed in as far as I could, sent the photo to my daughter immediately, and she was blown away. Uh, my, my wife said that she was just ecstatic to see the cheetahs. So, that made me really happy. Um, I'm glad I got to see that for her and for me as well. But that wasn't part of the big five. After we saw the leopard, we saw the big five. <sighs> Blown away. This day couldn't get much better. So the next day, we did another early start. Um, we started at 7 a.m. again. We get into the Land Cruiser, drive down the world's bumpiest road after my back is already hurting. And then we get into the park pretty early and we get immediately again, start seeing the same animals. Um, not to say that it's boring, but you do see the same animals over and over again, especially the gazelles. But this time, I think we were on another side of the park because the vegetation and the landscape started changing a little bit more. It was a little bit more green than the other side. So that was really cool to be able to see some of the trees and the vegetation that I didn't see before. Um, but again, we saw the same animals. We came up on a giant pride of lionesses and they were all sitting on this rock just like the Lion King, not to be offensive, but it was just like the Lion King um, where they're all sitting on a rock uh, just kind of hanging out. It was probably 10 or 12 of them and it was, it was just really cool to see that. Uh, but again, this landscape changed and this time we had water on this side. So we had this huge river running through that had baboons, crocs, crocodiles and also hippos right we saw a bunch of hippos it was they were pretty far away again these are real dangerous animals so you don't want to get near them especially the crocs um, the crocs were kind of hard to get a photo or video of because they blended in so well with the soil or the uh, mud that they were laying in i didn't see any of them swimming but they were all just laying on the bank the baboons were everywhere as soon as you come up on this bridge you just scatter and they're 50 60 of them just running around um, the hippos, again, like I said, pretty far away. So I thought the lions, the male lions, was going to be my favorite part of this entire trip until the very, very end of our trip. We were heading out. Uh, we we're almost to the exit of the park up towards where we need to be to get out. And I just see, started to see elephants more and more. Um, and they were pretty far away, and they started getting closer and closer. And as we pull up, my jaw just hits the bottom of this truck. I 
blown away. I am 30 meters from these elephants and I'm just going to town, just taking all these photos. Um, these are probably my favorite photos of the trip and I'll go ahead and insert those now. So that's all I have for Kenya or the Masi Mata uh, Reservation or Park. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please consider liking down below as it really does help this channel out tremendously. And if you haven't already and would like to do so, please consider subscribing and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.